morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or longevity business or something you may have heard about or read about, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. And, of course, if you have questions or comments about our Truth Skin Health products, or the longevity business or longevity formulations, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head over to my website's brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can order longevity products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you have personally benefited from the longevity products or from nutritional supplementation, this is a business that you want to know about for a one-time $25 fee. you got your own business. Tax write-offs associated with your own business. Be your own boss. Make as much money or as little money as you like work out of the home. If you're a single mom or a parent and you want to be with your kids, this is ideal for you. One time $25 fee and you're in business. Call 866-735-2470. They can give you the scoop or you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. And if you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com. That's truth treatments.com. Make sure you take a specially long look at our retinol 5% gel as well as our truth serum, truth balm and truth omega 6 healing cream, all vitamin C dense products and our retinol 5% gel is made with the most retinol you're going to find in any over the counter product. I designed it to be equipotent to have the same potency as retin A 0.05%. There's about a 100 times difference between retinoic acid and retinol. Retinol 5% gel, which you'll find at uh, truthtreatments.com, has 100 times times the amount of retin-A activity, of retinoid activity, I should say, because of the 100 times difference between retinoic acid and retinol. So it's equipotent, has the same potency as your prescription point. 0.5% 0.5% Retin-A. Of course, you're going to get vitamin C in my truth, Retinol 5% gel, and never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, wax, water, silicon, oil, surfactant, perfume, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth skin health products. Truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, got lines open at 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. We're talking connective tissue and we're talking fibromyalgia, which is basically an uncontrolled growth of fibers and uncontrolled inflammation and uncontrolled pain that affects the entire connective tissue muscle system. That is 70 to 80% of the body. This is what accounts for the unbelievable misery that the fibromyalgia patient has to endure. Even worse, when the fibromyalgia patient goes to the doctor, and there really isn't anything a doctor can do, so uh, it's kind of silly to even go to a doctor, but 
nonetheless, that's how we're trained. We're trained to go to the doctor when we don't feel well. And we go to the doctor, we say, oh my gosh, my body feels a terrible head to toe. It aches head to toe. I've got all these tender spots. And the doctor gives you an antidepressant because he doesn't know what else to do because they can't figure out fibromyalgia because they don't understand the nature of the connective tissue. Basically, if you've been listening to this program for the last few months, you understand more about the connective tissue than your average doctor does, and you understand more about fibromyalgia than your average doctor does, and you know that an antidepressant isn't what you need. You need to work on cleaning the system. Remember, the connective tissue is the great dumping ground of, of the blood. Blood toxicity invariably will end up in the connective tissue. This will initiate an immune slash inflammatory response in the connective tissue. You will feel that as pain. The key word to understand when we talk about the connective tissue system is system. A system can be defined as a whole that's made up of parts, all of which work together and all of which are absolutely necessary for the system to operate as it should. It means everything is not only connected, but everything is connected to form an emergent whole, a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. The whole connective tissue system depends on all of its parts. The whole body is a system. The body is such a, is a system like the connective tissue is a system. And this is why you can't remove organs. This is why you can't just take out structures and glands and tissue and expect the body to operate as it should. I understand sometimes there's cancer and you have to remove carcinogenesis and, and cancerous tissue. I understand that. But shy of cancer, no one should ever have an organ structure tissue removed from the body, unless it's cancer. Shy of cancer, no one should ever have parts of their body, parts of the body taken out. And any medical professional who suggests organ removal, shy of cancer, should be regarded with great skepticism. Actually should be completely avoided. If some doctor tells you you're going to have to take out your uterus because you got cramps, or you're going to have to hack off your breast because you might have cancer, or you might get cancer, or should take out your thyroid because it's working too fast, Run. Don't walk out of the office. Run and never return. That's a boneheaded medical professional who will destroy your life. And ask anyone who's had an organ removed. Then you'll never be the same again. Now, if you've had it removed, there's things that you can do. You can mitigate the damage. It just means you have to be much more careful with how you live your life. If you don't have a gallbladder, you've got to be much more careful with what you eat and with nutritional supplementation. If you've had a hysterectomy because some doctor couldn't figure out why you had fibroids or because you're cramping or you had heavy periods, some boneheaded medical professional, and there's endless amounts of them who suggest these kinds of procedures. If you've had one removed, you had a hysterectomy, had your uterus removed, it doesn't mean it's the end of the world, but it means you have to be much more vigilant. You have to be much more careful around fats, fat absorption, fat digestion. You have to be much more careful around nutritional supplementation, particularly vitamins A and E and D and essential fatty acids and minerals. Doesn't mean it's the end of the world. It just means you have to be much more careful. Same with a thyroidectomy or any kind of organ removal or any kind of gland removal. It's not the end of the world. It just means you have to be much more vigilant. On the other hand, if you got your organs, keep them. Shy of cancer. Case of fibromyalgia. It exemplifies the nature of the body as a system. The health challenge does. It exemplifies the entire body, the body as, an, as a whole system made up of a bunch of parts. That's why it's felt from head to toe. People with fibromyalgia will be in pain pretty much all over their body. It's global. It's systemic. And doctors can't figure out how the heck this can be. How can, and by the way, there's no tests for fibromyalgia. There's no blood test to show antibodies or any kind of chemicals that are increased when you have fibromyalgia. You just know you have it because it hurts. The reason why doctors think it's all in your head is because they can't figure out where it's hurting because it, the pain is global. And there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with the body. The inflammation and the fibrosis are microscopic. They can't really be seen clinically. And how could you possibly feel pain all over your body if you don't have any bruising or if you don't have any trauma? Here's some Prozac. Here's some Cymbalta. Because it's obviously all in your head. No, it's not. All right. We're going to continue talking fibromyalgia and connective tissue on the bright side when we come back from this break. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Okay, we are back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here. 
our number, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the bright side, 844-236-6010. Here's our number. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please head to truthtreatments.com. And if you want to join the Bright Side Ben team or purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts as well as news stories on all the websites, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com. Or you can call the phone team at 866 735 2470. Tell them you want to join the Brightside Ben team, start a business, and make some money selling longevity products and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. All right, we're talking fibromyalgia as part of the connect, as a uh, as the result of the connective tissue, or as a, res- as a result of degradation and inflammation in the connective tissue. The connective tissue being the the great dumping ground of dirty blood. It all starts off with dirty blood. Well, actually, it all starts off with a messed up digestive system. And then dirty blood, which, by the way, is fibrotic blood, is clotted blood, is clogged blood. Ultimately, it will end up in the connective tissue, thus the development of what is known as the mysterious health challenge of fibromyalgia. There doesn't appear to be anything wrong. Looking at the body from the outside, it doesn't appear like there's anything wrong. Certainly, there's no visible signs of bruising or trauma. Everything is microscopic. Nonetheless, it feels awful. People who have fibromyalgia can't move their bodies without pain. They don't feel like getting out of bed. It's just a global head-to-toe sensation of tenderness and pain all over the body, and it's absolutely miserable. And there's nothing, 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 nothing a doctor can do. Nothing. No drugs, no surgical procedure, no nothing. And this makes it very, very frustrating to deal with. And if you go into the doctor's office complaining of fibromyalgia, you're going to walk out of the doctor's office with a prescription for Prozac if you get anything at all because there's nothing a doctor can do. So what is it that goes on? What is it that goes wrong? Well, when we talk about the digestive tract, that's always the first thing that you want to look at is the digestive system. One of the aspects of the digestive system when it comes to the development of inflammatory diseases involves how we process estrogen. Now, we've talked about this in the past, and this is an incredibly important subject because it's very underappreciated. The impact of estrogen on the immune system, the impact of estrogen on uh, on inflammation and on pain and on the disease process. It's not so much estrogen as much as it is the breakdown products of estrogen, estrogen metabolites, estrogen breakdown products which accumulate. These are called, by the way, catechol estrogens. The breakdown products of estrogen are called catechol estrogens. That's spelled C-A-T-E-C-H-O-L, catechol estrogens. And if you have an estrogenic health issue, whether it's PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, or bad periods, dysmenorrhea, messed up menstrual cycles, infertility, insomnia, inflammatory diseases, autoimmune diseases, hypothyroidism, there's a really good chance that you're dealing with elevated levels of catechol estrogens. Now, when we're detoxifying appropriately, when our body is cleaning itself out appropriately, the body is a self-cleaning system. The body is a self-detoxifying system. This is so cool. The body detoxifies itself like your dishwasher cleans itself. It doesn't need help to do it. It needs raw materials to do it, but it doesn't need any any special drugs to do it. It doesn't need any special formulas to do it. The body is built. It's designed. It is structured to detoxify itself. And one of the main elements that have to get detoxified are the hormones, specifically estrogen. Estrogen is a very powerful substance, and when it breaks down, it breaks down into even more powerful substances, some of which can cause tremendous amounts of distress, including inflammation. So estrogen cleansing is really, really important, catechol estrogen cleansing, and under ordinary circumstances, this cleansing system proceeds perfectly. Estrogen cleansing is handled by the liver, specifically is handled by bile. Well, it's handled by a couple of things in the liver, but one of the things that handles estrogen clearance is bile. Remember, the liver is a digestive organ. The liver does lots of things, but it is, well, I don't want to say first and foremost a digestive organ, but in many ways it is a digestive organ. It helps us digest and helps us process foods. Not necessarily digest, but process foods. The liver interacts with the intestines. 
The liver interacts with gut bacteria. Gut bacteria are constantly communicating to the liver. There is a major connection between gut bacteria and bile. If you have any kind of bile issues, as in gallstone formation, or if you have liver problems, or if you're not clearing out toxins appropriately, start with probiotics. Start with good bacteria. Always. That, that's just a general rule of thumb. Always start with the intestine. But if you're dealing with catecholestrogen problems, start with probiotics. If you're dealing with any estrogenic health issues, if you're gaining weight and you don't know why, if you're a woman you've got, and you've got uh, painful periods or fibroids or, or fibrocystic breasts, all of these are manifestations of excess catechol estrogen. Start with the intestine. Start with probiotics. As the effects of messed up gut bacteria accrue over time, it's very likely that you are going to have problems with estrogen. And this, by the way, this condition begins at birth for many folks. Bacteria are supposed to implant in the intestine as the baby passes through the birth canal. If mom is not healthy, if mom is not taking care of her digestive health issues, if you are born cesarean and 33%, one out of three babies is born cesarean section, you are going to have problems at this level, at the level of the gut and at the level of the intestine. If you've had an appendix removed at an early age, the appendix is not some vestigial organ. The appendix is a warehouse, a storehouse for good bacteria. If you've had an appendectomy at a young age, the chances are very good you're going to be dealing, if you're a woman or a man for that matter, you're going to be dealing with estrogen issues, especially if you're a woman. I can't tell you the amount of women I know and I've worked with as patients who have had appendectomies, uh, their appendix removed, and are now suffering with uh, dysmenorrhea, painful periods, discomfort, or, uh, or irregular or heavy bleeding around the time of their menstrual cycle. Now, if you have had an appendectomy, you're not going to put your appendix back, but you can certainly concentrate on your digestive tract and uh, the intestine, and, and specifically on bacteria, on, uh, bacteria in the intestine. Even if you haven't had an appendectomy, even if you haven't been born cesarean section, even if your mom was healthy, by the time we're teenagers, we've been drinking chlorinated water, we've been drinking fluoridated water, we've been taking antibiotics, we've been getting antibiotics in our foods, we've been eating preserved foods. All of these will ultimately impact gut bacteria, ultimately kill off gut bacteria, and can certainly affect bile in the liver in the long run. Eventually, this disruption is going to affect meta uh, the metabolism of estrogen. The end result is a buildup of catechol estrogens. And you're going to go to the doctor with fibromyalgia. Nobody's going to ask you about your intestine. Nobody's going to ask you about dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria. Nobody's going to ask you if you had your appendix taken out. And oh, by the way, if you've had any abdominal surgery, this will also increase, or any surgery really, where they've had to cut into the abdomen, this will also increase the likelihood of fibromyalgia. God forbid if you've been on chemotherapy, if you had cancer, that will increase the likelihood of fibromyalgia. What you're hearing here, folks, is that fibromyalgia is the end result of a sequence of events that could begin as early as birth. It could have started at teenagerhood, or it could have to do with prescription drugs or some kind of treatment for another health challenge. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll take a quick break and come back with more good health information and you and your phone calls on the bright side right after this. Back on the bright side, Farms has been here, 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. If you have questions about the longevity products or connective tissue or fibromyalgia or thyroid disease or estrogen, if you're interested in clearing out excess estrogen, you want some strategies, or if you just want to comment, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Get your calls here in just a sec. From the International Journal of Cancer, this is an article about estrogen and thyroid cancer, unbalanced estrogen metabolism in thyroid cancer. Researchers concluded that 
estrogen metabolism is unbalanced in thyroid cancer, and it may be a combination of estrogen and the genetics of the cell that play a role in the the initiation of thyroid cancer. What all of this means is if you have a thyroid problem, it doesn't have to be thyroid cancer, but it could be hypothyroidism, it could be Graves' disease, hyperthyroidism. If you have a thyroid problem, suspect estrogen. And iodine is not a remedy for thyroid disease. And I keep hearing chiropractors and alternative practitioners and naturopaths and people who should know better talking about using iodine for thyroid disease. It doesn't help. You may need some iodine because everybody needs iodine. Iodine is important for all of the glands of the body. And you can't make thyroid hormone without iodine. But it's not like iodine is a magic remedy for the thyroid. It is not. If you are hypothyroid, if you have poor thyroid function, suspect estrogen suspect adrenal stress, and suspect digestive problems. In other words, work backwards to the triangle of disease. I got a call today from um, a friend of mine who's a chiropractor. She may be listening to the program. She wants to know about Hashimoto's, Hashimoto's disease. Hashimoto's is just a, a, a technical name or it's a diagnosis for hypothyroidism that is related to autoimmunity. All autoimmune autoimmune issues, like all thyroid issues, should be backtracked to the digestive system, and it typically will involve estrogen. If you have an estrogen problem, this is a digestive problem, or this should be regarded as a digestive problem first and foremost. You can use progesterone to balance out your estrogen. You can use pregnenolone to balance out estrogen, P-R-E-G. N-E-N-O-L-O-N-E. You can get that at a health food store, 100 milligrams or so a day. You can use vitamin A and vitamin E to help balance out estrogen. Fiber can help you get rid of estrogen. Essential fatty acids are like nature's version of estrogen. These are all strategies for helping balance out estrogen. But if you've got problems metabolizing and breaking down your estrogen at the level of the gut or clearing out estrogen at the level of the liver and at the level of the bile, you're still gonna run into a problem. Work on the digestive system, work on the gut, work on probiotics, work on fermented food, or use probiotics, use fermented food, eat less food. Make sure you're supporting fat metabolism with bile salts, with your ultimate enzymes, with pancreatin, which is pancreatic enzyme, lecithin granules, you can use the amino acids threonine and methionine, they help with fat metabolism. You can use the B vitamin choline, C-H-O-L-I-N-E, and inositol. That may help you with, uh, with fat metabolism. And certainly you can eat less fatty foods or at least grind up your fatty foods. And when you're eating fatty foods, try to stick to fatty foods that are whole and unprocessed like olives and avocados and even fatty fish. And of course, make sure you're using your ultimate essential fatty acids along with vitamin E, which protects your fatty acids. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Good morning, Jim in Colorado. Welcome to the bright side. Hey, Ben, how you doing? Doing good. What's going on, man? Uh, well, I haven't made a whole lot of progress with this PRP that I talked to you about. Okay, oh, I, okay. You're, I, I had you on a fast. I had you on a fast. You're the uh, yeah. pityriasis yeah, Rose, I, Rose. You're the guy that sent did, me those pictures, right, Jim? That's right. I did okay. the fast and... Uh, you know, I tried to introduce one thing at a time, which I'm really not good at. But What did uh, you find? I think it's either eggs. I haven't done dairy yet, but I think it's either eggs or uh, um, I eat a lot of onions. I don't know if it's that. No, it wouldn't be uh, onions. It would be something complex. Here's the deal, Jim. We want to get you some quick relief. Are you doing, have you done, try chicken soup, cartilage, uh, cartilage oh, rich? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've been on bone stick broth. With, for... Stick with that. Just eat that. Make sure you're getting lots of salt. Okay? Just basically that should be your food. Use your ultimate EFAs to make sure you're getting your fats. Stick with the bone soup. Now, I saw a picture, and for the listeners, Jim's condition is extremely dramatic. It's, it's from what I saw, it was head to toe. Okay, it's extremely dramatic. You're breaking down, my friend. It didn't take you, and I think you told me you're in your 60s, right? Oh, no, I'm 73. Okay, you're 73. It, it, It didn't take you overnight to get in this condition. Your tissue is going to have to build up. But as long as it's being offended, as long as the body is being assaulted, 
it's not going to be able to build up. So you've got to figure out what that assault is. Now, we can give you building strategies, and you should probably be doing those anyway, but as long as it's being assaulted, as long as your connective tissue is breaking down, this condition is not going to get any better. So you should probably still be doing things like protein and essential fatty acids and bone soup and the Mighty 90 and probiotics, but as long as stuff is getting into the system, you're not going to recover. Yeah. Now, here's the, here's the really important message here, Jim. You're talking about leaky gut, right? Yes, I'm talking about leaky gut. Okay. And as long as stuff is leaking through the gut into the blood, it's going to be like, like spitting into the wind. All right, you're not going to be able to get better. Now, you should still do the building strategies, but we want to figure out what's getting into the system. Two important points here. You didn't get into this pickle overnight, and it's not going to resolve overnight, although it can begin to resolve overnight. It's not going to completely resolve overnight, but you could begin the process right away. The second important thing, and this is really important, I don't mean to be dramatic here, but your problem is not a skin problem. I'm going to say that again because it seems so obvious yep. that it's a skin problem. It is not a, a skin. It's a structure. Well, no. Yes, it starts at the gut. But what you're observing is a structural issue in the connective tissue. The connective tissue is deteriorating. It is no longer able to feed the surface. The surface of the skin is fed from the connective tissue. This is so important because when we look at the skin, it just looks like the surface, and we don't think that there's stuff underneath that's actually sustaining and nourishing the surface. And so what you're, when you see the surface, that, that elephant, and base, it looks like elephant skin is what it looks like for the listeners. It's just, it's, it's terrible. When you look at it, you're saying, okay, it's, it looks like it's the skin. It's not. It's the connective tissue underneath that's breaking down. And the reason this is important, Jim, is because your heart is made of connective tissue. Your structures, your organs and glands are fed and sustained by connective tissue. And when the connective tissue breaks down, it breaks down as a system, which means you are now more prone to heart disease, God forbid, cancer, and other structural and and a, a glandular diseases as well. So getting to the bottom of this solu- getting to the bottom of this problem at, at the root level is going to add years to your life and save you from incredible health misery. I know you're it's miserable right now, but <laughs> it could be worse. Okay, we don't want that to happen. So this is yeah. really important. And when you say to me, "Well, I'm not good at fasting," I hear, "I'm not good at taking care of my body." And, you know, your, it's your body, I, I'm, not, I'm going, it's not my body, I don't have a problem with it, but this is no, your I body. I went on a 10-day fast. I, you know, I did a 10-day fast, and then I tried to introduce everything one at a time. Introducing and you found- one... One food item or one group of food? One food, food Jim. One food. If you wow. do one group, you're not going to know what caused the problem. This is like a detective game. Well, I meant like vegetables. I mean... No, uh, because if know, there's, there's a thousand vegetables, right? So if you say, well, I'm just going to lay off vegetables, you may have a problem with, with yam. All right, we're back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Jim in Colorado. I've got Jim here. Jim, I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. I'm just going to tell you, you've got to figure out what the food issue is. Although that's not going to instantly turn things around, it will begin the process. Let me give you a couple supplements. If I haven't already told you this, let me give you some supplements that may help you. Let me, let me go through the list you gave me, okay? Uh, okay. NAC. Okay. Vitamin A. What kind of vitamin A? I mean, that's where I'm kind of stuck. There's no, Pete there's called no. me from Arkansas. Pete, Who Pete did? from Arkansas. Yeah. We talked about a week ago, and uh, he was supposed to get back with me. He didn't, he didn't come okay. back. Um, I'm going to tell you what kind of vitamin A. Just go to the health food okay. store. Go to Vitamin Cottage. Okay? I know you got one near you. You're in, you're in Greeley, right? Oh, yeah, right. Okay, just just go over to Vitamin Cottage. That's a really cool for the listeners. That's a really cool health food store here in Colorado. Uh, get twenty thousand international units a day of vitamin A capsules. It's generic. It costs you three bucks. Okay, okay. maybe 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 cost you ten dollars. It's cheap. What? All right. Don't don't brain damage it. Twenty thousand IU a day. I think they come in ten thousand IU capsules. Take two of them a day. All right. Okay. Uh, make sure you're using your ultimate EFAs nine a day. I am. Okay, Get all, then take more. Take 12 a day. Make sure you're using uh, uh, 50 milligrams a day of zinc picolinate, if you're not already. Oh, okay, picolinate, okay. Zinc picolinate. Make sure you're using your ultimate selenium, 600 micrograms a day. Go get some extra fish oil capsules. Or fish oil, not capsules, but fish oil liquid. Use Carlson's I'm, lemon flavor. I'm taking fish oil. Okay, straight fish oil, not the capsules. Straight fish oil. No, I'm Go taking for- it straight. 
Okay, good. Carlson's lemon flavored fish oil. Okay. I, I mean, it doesn't have to be lemon flavored. I like the lemon flavored. It's a little bit tastier. It's a little tastier. Uh, get on the bone broth protein. In addition, use glucosamine supplements. The glucogel caps, maybe nine glucogel caps a day. And then continue on with the bone soup, the chicken soup. Try to eat as little, uh, as little complicated food as possible. And continue on with your, with your uh, data gathering experiment with your fasting and your elimination diet. Now, keep in mind, what you're looking at here now, Jim, is building connective tissue. You have arthritis of the skin. You probably have joint problems, too. I can't imagine you don't have no, joint problems. You don't no, have any don't joint problems? Sense. No arthritis, no, no, no soreness or, or when you wake up in the morning no. or anything? No. Okay. That would be very, that's, that's somewhat unusual. And I would, you know, I would, I would be looking for it just so you could have a diagnostic tool. The reason these are important, these other symptoms are important, is because if you have other symptoms, you can kind of see when your body's improving. The skin is going to take a little bit longer to improve, uh, to, for you to notice improvement because you're so broken down there. But if you could find some other symptoms, whether they're digestive symptoms or discomfort, pain and discomfort, that will give you a diagnostic tool. If you don't have them, you don't well, have I them. Well, have, uh, I, I have uh, loose, what, I guess what you call loose uh, BM problems. Okay, well, that's perfect. That's perfect. That's a good diagnostic tool. You understand what I'm saying by a diagnostic tool? So you can kind of yeah. see where you're getting better, and that's important. Right. That's why you always want to look for symptoms because these give you windows into the body to, so you can assess uh, how effective your, your treatment program, your thera therapeutic program mm -hmm. is. Loose stools are great. That's a sign of malabsorption, and that absolutely is linked to the connective tissue degradation and to food right. problems as well. Hey, I got to motivate. I'm hungry I gotta get some... all the time. You're hungry all the time because you're probably malabsorbing. You're probably not absorbing. That's why right. the liquids are right. so helpful. You got a Vitamix? Do you yes, have a I Vitamix? Do. Uh, do uh, bone soup and do, uh, I'm sorry, do veggie juices and also do, uh, do the bone broth protein smoothies. So you can make sure you're getting some protein, uh, easy to absorb protein. Bone broth protein is much easier for the body to handle than whey protein. Whey protein is fabulous, but it's got more active proteins than bone broth protein does, and more active amino acids, I should say. And so some, fe some people, and more active peptides, so some people have a, a problem with whey, and you may have that issue. So Go with the bone broth protein. Uh, that's what I would uh, be doing. Go with the bone broth protein. Go ahead. I'm just doing bone broth, you know, boiling bones for uh, 48 that's great, hours. And but, then... That's great, but you're not going to get the density of protein that you will in the bone broth protein powder. It's still good. I'm not, not saying not where to do I, that. Where do I get that bone broth protein powder? Brightsidehealth.com. Brightsidehealth.com. Okay. Stay in touch, Jim. Thank you so much for your call. Appreciate it, and have a beautiful day. God bless you, my friend. All right. Brian in Texas, welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. <laughs> Hey, Ben, how are you? I'm doing good. What's going on? Where in Texas are you? I'm in Austin. Oh, I hope I see you next week. I'm going to be at Brave New Books on the uh, 22nd, Wednesday the 22nd. Oh, I hope I get to see you. you. I'm a big, big fan. Good deal. Good deal. Make sure you say I've, hello. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I've called a couple of times before. Um, I'm in the fitness world myself. and uh, I had a Are you a trainer? Questions. Yeah, are I'm a tra group fitness instructor. Okay, good deal. What's going on? So uh, I have asthma. And, okay. Um, I'm on a. I'm. A, I don't have like asthma attacks though. I have more. It's more uh, exercise induced, and it's. Got it. I have trouble breathing, but it's never where like I feel like I'm going. I need to go to the hospital or anything like that. So what I have. What kind like, of workout? Do you, do you notice? Uh, do you notice it's more when you work out with weights, or more when you work out with do aerobic workout, or, or is it just generally I speaking? Do high intensity interval training. So we always mix weights and cardio together. Okay, and then you'll have problems and, uh, breathing when you're done. Yeah, well, I always wake up wheezing almost every morning. Okay. I've given up alcohol, and that's been helping me a lot. And, nice. And, uh, but I have a rescue in here. I'll use it in the morning just to get rid of the wheezing. I'm sorry, I you said what? What started. did you say? I'm sorry, you said you have what? Inhaler. Oh, you have an inhaler. Okay, inhaler. good. Okay. Yeah, I just use it in the morning to stop myself from wheezing. Okay. And then I'm also on Advir, and I just basically okay. want to get your opinion about both of those things. And see well, What's the I rescue inhaler? Doing. What's the name of the rescue inhaler? It is a Ventolin. Okay, Ventolin. All right, so let me tell you about both of those drugs, okay? Uh, the the uh, Advair is, is kind of similar to the, to the Ventolin, but it has a, uh, uh, it, it's a steroid. I think, I'm trying to think of, what's the generic name for Ventolin? It's been so long since I've been uh, doing this. 
Albuterol. Okay. So uh, albuterol and, uh, and Advair have some similarities. Albut- uh, Advair is actually salmeterol. And whenever you hear O-all, like O-rol uh, or O-rol, like metoprolol or salmeterol or albuterol, you're dealing with what's called a beta blocker. Okay. Mm-hmm. The Advair is a beta blocker plus a steroid. The Ventolin is just a beta blocker. Now, these beta blocker drugs have a suppressant effect on the heart and they'll help open up the bl- uh, they'll open up they'll help open up the lungs uh, but they are drugs they're not as bad as the in, as the oral drugs but they're still drugs and they're still going to get into your blood and it's not a good idea especially for a young guy like yourself who's working out what that's telling me however is that you're dealing with some kind of immune response or at least the steroid is telling me you're dealing with some kind of immune response and that's typically what happens when you have asthma it's a defensive response it's the way the body protects itself this defensive response is initiated by the hormone cortisol i'm sure you've heard of cortisol right yes. this is and when you're working out one of the things that happens is workouts are great but one of the things that happens when you work out for some folks is you spike your cortisol for, for all of us, but must, some of us are more sensitive to others. So what you got to do is you got to lower that l- the levels of your stress hormone, low, lower the levels of cortisol. And there's several ways to do that. Now, slow, deep breathing is something that you definitely want to be doing throughout the day. That can have an anti-cortisol effect, especially when you're working out. Now, you should know, I'm sure you do know this, that oxygenation and exercise go hand in hand. And a lot of times when we're working out, we do something called the Valsalva maneuver. Have you heard of this, the Valsalva maneuver? Yeah. That's where you contract. When you, you know what I'm talking about? Where you contract when you're lifting weights, you contract when you're doing something heavy or intense. You want to be very careful of that. So you want to make sure you're practicing slow, deep breathing as you're doing your exercise. The second thing you could do is you can help balance out cortisol, and there's lots of great nutrients or great supplements that do that. Pregnenolone, which I talk about all the time, has anti-cortisol effects. You should be doing 100 milligrams of that every day. Magnesium can help. I'd be doing magnesium on a regular basis if you're not already, 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams a day. Vitamin E can help uh, stabilize cortisol. Uh, You should be doing 400 international units a day of vitamin E, and that's every day. In addition, you want to be using nutrients that help support muscle building. Uh, Zinc is very important for muscle building. Uh, Obviously, protein, I'd be using my bone broth protein and gluten glucosamine as well. If you have any food allergies or any digestive problems, that can tip you over the edge. Uh, uh, Cortisol effects and asthma and exercise-induced asthma and and a lot of the symptoms associated with excess stress hormones are really a straw that breaks the camel's back phenomena. So removing straws off the camel's back can allow you to get workouts without going into into, uh, spiking your cortisol. Does that make sense how I explain that? So you want to remove other things. If you have food problems, if you have digestive health issues uh, due to the elimination diet, uh, finding foods that cause... uh, the, the trigger reactions and eliminate those foods and support digestive health at the same time using your gut bacteria, nightly essence, probiotics, fermented food. If you have leaky gut syndrome, you want to start patching up the gut with glutamine powder, uh, cartilage containing uh, substances, fucoidin can help patch up the gut, hyaluronic acid, slimy substances, algaes, and seaweeds, and also to a certain extent uh, mushrooms or, or mushroom powder, reishi or maitake can help too.